You're listening to the Skeptics Guide 5x5. Five, five. five minutes with five skeptics. With Steve, Jay, Rebecca, Bob, and Evan. This is the SGU 5x5, five five, and tonight's topic is the Shroud of Turin. Researchers John and Rebecca Jackson are calling for a reinvestigation of the famous carbon-14 dating that dated the Shroud of Turin to the mid-14th century, the same century that other lines of evidence also point to. Well, you know what? I, I say go ahead, retest it, you know, redo the carbon dating, let them do it, and let's see what the conclusions are with some, some more modern technology and everything. Like, who cares? The only problem I see, I'm fine with a closed circuit of idiots testing and retesting and retesting the thing. But the fact is it's been debunked so many times. Joe Nickel debunked it conclusively. And, you know, it's kind of wasting newspaper space now. It's in the L.A. Times. I mean, Shroud of Turin stirs new controversy. Really? I mean, come on, people. We're, we're pretty much over this. But we can't expect the media to do it correctly. But the bottom line is I would actually like to see it happen again. And I think it's not, it's not a bad thing for them to retest it with modern equipment because every time they retest it and they say, no, it isn't, an another generation of people gets to hear that it's not the real thing. Yeah, but here's the reason why they want to retest it. They say it at a conference sponsored by the Shroud Science Group at Ohio State University this, the past weekend. Los Alamos National Laboratory presented findings that the 1988 test results were flawed because samples tested came from a portion of the cloth that may have been added to the shroud during medieval repairs. Yeah, that's lame. So here's, here's why this is completely lame. The artistic evidence, the historical evidence, all points to a medieval forgery, a 14th century forgery. The three independent labs did the carbon-14 dating in 1988, and they found that it dates to the mid-14th century, like 1349, 50, within a very, very small margin of error. The shroud scientists, those who are claimed to be scientifically investigating the shroud, but who clearly are dedicated to the conclusion that it's that it's a 2,000-year-old genuine artifact from you know Jesus, uh, they have been fishing for any excuse to debunk the carbon-14 dating. Initially, they said it was from bacterial contamination was throwing the date off. Now they're saying it's from the repair sections, and they said maybe it was the fire. They just keep going from one excuse to the other one. But here's the thing. What they're saying is that whatever contaminated the shroud to throw off the carbon-14 dating happened to throw it off exactly by the right amount to make the date come out to exactly what we predicted it would be based upon all the other lines of evidence. That makes it an, it would, an extraordinary coincidence if they're right. This guy's had made many other claims before, and as Stephen Schofferman, who was a geologist who maintains a website skeptical of the, the Shroud, said, he's had other ideas, but they've all been shot down, and this one will be shot down too. Yeah, plus the... Um the repairs seems pretty funny to me because when you when you look at high res images of the of the shroud, the repairs from the from the burns and from the fire that that the shroud suffered, they pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious where they are and where the damage was. I just can't imagine you're cutting snippets off of the shroud and you're gonna yeah. you're gonna pull it from these areas that are blatantly repaired areas. To me, that that was that was very surprising that they would even suggest that. They're suggesting that, that the scientists back in 1988 totally screwed up effectively. So let them go through the process again. I mean, we, we will see the results, and no one, no, no one really is going to be harmed by them going through this testing again. I think it would be a, a good exercise just to reestablish the fact that the carbon dating uh, was correct the first time. But we know what's going to happen. The carbon dating will, will confirm the date approximately, and... It will change nobody's mind. The shroud scientists will not alter their opinions because obviously they're not swayed by evidence. They'll find some new round of excuses because they want to test and test and retest until they come up with the result that they want. Yeah, I think that this is just a way to get it back in the news and to get it back in people's minds when it should be something that quietly fades away and is never seen again. Because there are so many valid criticisms, even aside from the carbon dating, that it's... I mean, it's just silly. Like, let it die. 
It's not real and, people. And how fa- what really upset me, the one line that upset me more than anything in this article, and it really made me realize that they would just, the facts are, you know, kind of meaningless things to them. The article says that they concluded that the shroud was not painted, dyed, or stained, and that the blood stains were real. That was a supposed co- conclusion from the 1978 team of scientists, quote unquote, led by Jackson. Mm. My God, that's that, that can't be further from the truth. If you can't even get th- that information right, I mean, it's pretty much generally co- uh, believed now that it's tempera paint from mm-hmm. from all the scientific studies done that this was paint, and th- there is no blood on it. And if they can't even believe that by now, then then. The facts don't mean anything. Exactly. Have any of you guys seen the technique where they, they carve a bronze plate to look like a face, and it's it's sloped in a 3D, you know, the carving is 3D, and then what they do is they heat the plate up, and then they kind of burn the image onto the cloth, and, and that was one technique that they, they mentioned. Yeah, there are artistic techniques that can exactly duplicate the shroud, and Bob's right. There's paint on the shroud, not blood. Every uh, you know, independent scientist who didn't dedicate their life to proving that it was a miraculous relic has come up to the conclusion that this was a medieval forgery. It's only people who are dedicated a priori to the belief that it's the burial shroud of Jesus who come up with these different findings. SGU 5x5 is a companion podcast to The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, a weekly science podcast brought to you by the New England Skeptical Society in association with Skeptic.org. For more information on this and other episodes, visit our website at www.theskepticsguide.org. Music is provided by Jake Wilson. 